Lashi Lawrence McElroy here for Water Tiger School at Tai Chi Chuan. Once again, um, no, contrary to what might be popular opinion at this point, we haven't faded into the background. Um, <clears throat> no excuses. We've just been away from our YouTube channel for too long. So, uh, our bad. But here we are, and we will, as we've said in the past, endeavor to do better moving forward. Um, so, not a lot uh, about which to chat, so we'll get right to our focus for the day pretty quickly here. It is a return to moving Qigong, walking Qigong, frolicking Qigong. Um, so another piece from our approach to the five animal frolics. Um, we still have a lot of animal frolics left. We haven't hit very many of them. There are a couple of the animals that we've done uh, multiple frolics, uh, especially the crane. I think there's only one of the crane left. Uh, but this will be the deer frolics, uh, and we've only done one. We've only done deer walking, and I think that was all the way back when we were still doing Facebook Live sessions for Water Tiger for Sachem back in August of uh, 2020. Um, so this will be deer kicking, so there'll be some balance, some coordination, uh, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. And as always with the five animal frolics, because it's very important for our knees and our toes to remain in alignment, uh, we're going to do a warm-up from the nine temple exercises called Advance and Retreat that sort of sets the stage or sets the foundation or sets the mindset to pay attention that the knees and the toes are pointed the same direction. Um, Advance and Retreat also helps to uh, activate the front and the back of the lower abdominal area, uh, stimulates the Shia Dan Tien, uh, activates the Shen Yu, uh, internal organs uh, benefited include kidneys, liver, pancreas, um, gallbladder, pretty much all the colons ascending, descending, traverse, um, and it works the abdominals, the legs, and as I mentioned, um, sort of helps us build our mindfulness of our knees and our toes. So a little proprioception and kinesthesia. Um, so we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, let's see what else do I need to talk about. Uh, we'll get into the aspects of the deer uh, more when we get up and, and start addressing the actual frolic. But the deer frolics are used to improve liver function. So, you know, you get the, the liver on advanced and retreat, and you get the liver in the, the deer frolics. Uh, and it also ad addresses mental and emotional challenges. Um, and arthritis, especially in the hands, because the hands represent the antlers of the deer, and that's part of the chi focus. Uh, it can also help to um, improve, maybe not eliminate, but at least improve the stagnation that can come uh, as we grow older, as we all do. Uh, Tony Horton would say, back in the day, aging was for idiots. Uh, but what uh, Mr. Horton says now is aging is for those who do not, who are not willing or do not know how to slow it down. Um, so, okay. I guess I need to do the reveal on the t-shirts. There's my belly. Sorry about this is the last of my World Tai Chi Day and World Tai Chi and Qigong Day t-shirts. This is uh, 2007, a nice purple imprint, white t-shirt, uh, and it's the last of my 15. So I'm out of World Tai Chi Day t-shirts. Uh, I have done my darndest uh, since we started this series uh, back in and Facebook Live in March of 2020 uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic when the world shut down um, to maybe not ever, well, every once in a while, wear the same t-shirt twice. You know, if I'm doing a physical training video for Water Tiger School, it's usually always uh, either a white t-shirt or a white tank. Uh, and there are some other things that have been repeated as well. So let's just start with a little shake because we like doing this to get things going. Loosen up, relax. Got a sudden visual image from the way, way back. It's a movie, Google it. One of the characters in his mother calls this kind of movement dead dance. I just call it shaking up. <laughs> All right. So 
So that's from the if you know water tiger school category, always a, pul a pop culture reference uh, here, there, and yonder. So advance and retreat. Um, shoulder wide, maybe a little bit wider. Toes are going to be forward. Knees should be forward. Take a step back, so I'm not quite in the shadow. I began my uh, adult life in theater. You think you, you, you would think, you would, you would think, you would think, it's English, folks, um, I would be able to find my leg. So toes and knee, knees stay forward, but we're going to have a twist in the torso. So the tendency for most people when they twist their torso is to twist the hips. Which, see what happens to that knee? Yeah, not good. So you want to have that separation between the upper body and the lower body so you can turn the torso without putting torque on that knee, especially the trailing knee. So what you do, you know, to sort of work your way into this carefully is you start to turn in the lower abdominals, the lower back, and when those start to, you know, compress and get to their range of motion, you'll feel it start to tug at your hip. So then you're done there. So then you move up to the next section, sort of mid-torso. And at some point, you're going to run out of uh, range of motion in the mid-torso. It's going to start pulling on the lower torso, which is going to start pulling on the hip, and you're done there. And then you have your upper torso, shoulders, neck, and head. And same sort of process. It's going to go so far, hit its range of motion, start to pull down and pull into the hip. And then finally, what you have is simply your head on your neck. So advance and retreat, though both happen as you do each movement. So in other words, you're advancing while you retreat. You're also retreating while you advance. And you can sort of explore that feeling as you do the exercise. Probably not the first time. You'll want to pay attention to the physicality. Breathe when you have to. I'll suggest a breath pattern. There's an image involved as well. Um, and though it's called advance and retreat, and as I said, we do both of them at the same time, uh, we're going to start with the retreat movement. So I am going to settle my weight into my left foot. This is the left side of my body, right? Uh, and I'm going to turn and look to the left side. And I'm just going to let my arms hang. Some people do things with their arms in advance and retreat. To me, advance and retreat does not have anything to do with the arms. So I just let them be floppy, just completely nothing in them. So I'm looking in that distance. Something's coming toward me, and energy is coming toward me, a force is coming toward me. And what I do is I push off on the left foot to fill the right, to open space for that expansion. And then I turn, keeping all the weight on the right foot, and look to the right side of the room. And then I push off on the right foot to fill the left, and repeat. Turn and look to the left. And notice there are two movements here, the, the shift and the turn. The shift and the turn. Again, something's coming toward me, I'm giving it space. Young is coming toward me, I'm becoming you. And turn. Shift and turn. And because of the intent from a water tiger school perspective, this is an inhalation and this is an exhalation. It's an inhalation, the retreat, an exhalation, turn and look in another direction. Shift and turn. Knees and toes, same direction. Shift and turn. 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 Not really counting here. Maybe inhale and exhale, but breathe when you have to. Maybe inhale and exhale. Maybe inhale. And exhale. And again, I'm not really counting, but we're going to do one more pair. There's the last retreat in this direction. The last retreat in this direction. Now hold where you are. So I'm still looking to the right, but I have just retreated away from the right. Now I'm going to advance. So instead of moving away from the direction I'm looking, I'm going to move toward the direction I'm looking. So once again, I'm going to push off on the left foot to fill the right, but I'm going to move and look in that direction. That energy, that force, that whomever is moving away from me, becoming yin, and I'm becoming yang, filling the space, the opening, the jing, uh, whatever you want to call it. So shift. And once again, notice two things. I'm not shifting and turning. I'm shifting and then turning, keeping the weight on the right. Now I'm looking to the left, all the weights on the right foot, push off on the right to fill the left, shift. 
and turn. This is advance. Shift and turn. Knees and toes forward. Shift and turn. Maybe reversing the breath pattern because now I'm advancing. An exhalation comes on the shift and an inhalation. A breathe when you have to. Shift and turn. And there's a perfectly shift and turn. Reasonable argument to be made. Shift and turn. That shift and turn. Reverse the both breath pattern. Shift and turn in both of the halves of the exercise. Shift and turn. But this is the water tiger school of basic. Shift and turn or foundation. Shift and turn. Shift and turn. The concept only comes to breathing. That doesn't mean shift and turn. We don't do variations on that theme. Shift and turn. Shift and turn. Again, retreat. Somebody's retreating. I'm filling the space. Kim and Young to do it again. And turn. Advance and turn. And notice, as I'm advancing, filling this leg, that leg is driving down and back. There's the retreat. This shoulder is advancing forward for the twist. This shoulder is retreating back as I move forward. Shift, or sorry, turn. And now shift. And turn about four more pairs after this one. Shift and turn. So there's four and turn. There's four and turn. Here's three and turn and three, and turn, here's two, and turn, here's two, and turn, here's one, and turn, and the last advance, turn and face the front and redivide the weight to three. There's your little advance and retreat. So, with the deer frolics, now with the frolics in general, um, all of them, sort of have this 45 to 45 to 45 to 45 pattern of walk, which is why the separation between the torso and the lower body is important because as I'm in one foot turning the upper torso and doing whatever, maybe taking a step, maybe kicking. Uh, I can't, you know, if I bring that knee with me, if I turn my torso and pull that knee in with me, um, I'm going to have some knee issues. So we want to keep the quad open, keep the weighted knee pointed the same direction as the weighted toes as you go to the other 45. So that is very, 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 very important. Uh, the breath, you know, each of the animals have their own uh, nature, their own spirit, although there's a lot of repetition in such things as the breath pattern or the, the method of breathing, methodology for breathing, um, and the pattern for that matter. Um, and there's really no sameness in chi circulation. Almost every of each of the 26 different frolics is each animal, there are five animals, have five frolics, and there's what they would usually refer to as a basic animal frolic, which we complicate by water tiger school. Um, where was I going with that? Um, oh, they, uh, each of the, the five animals have uh, their own chi focus. I think that's what I was going for. Uh, so anyway, the deer, uh, what you want to do movement-wise, and they sort of have their own movement me uh, methodology as well, so otherwise sort of a movement focus. Um, and for the deer, that movement focus is always a stretch. You should always feel like you're stretching, and um, not a forceful stretch, um, but loosening the muscles of a stretch. And I like to think of the deer... Um, sort of as a regalness, because I always think of that, you know, if I see a deer and the chest is sort of out, I mean, we don't really do that in the deer frolics, but, you know, that idea of that poise. Um, so the breath is what we did for praying. If, if you paid attention in this series, if you, if you participated, not paid attention. Uh, it's a simple sort of yin inhale. 
and the exhale is out through the mouth, so the yin inhale in through the nose, and the exhale through the mouth. Through pursed lips, sort of the sound of, a, of the wind is how it's normally described, but I would say more of a breeze. So uh, like the wind that we saw on the East Coast uh, early in the morning, wind gusts of I think it was in the 40s. Uh, but anyway, so that's the breath. And unlike the Tai Chi to which we, and most of the Qigong that we do, there is a hold. So you inhale. There's a beat or two. And the exhale. And you hold for a beat or two. Inhale. Hold for a beat or two. Exhale. And hold for a beat or two. So that's the breath. The chi focus is tricky. I, I mentioned that you know the hands are supposed to represent the antlers. We never do this in the beer crawler. Well, sometimes we do when we're just you know, having a good time. Uh, and the hands do go up near the temples, but we don't do the reverse. But it's just sort of that idea, you know, the way that I look at it is I do my best not to be completely symmetrical in the hands. So you have the, the sort of protruding antlers going out in all sorts of different directions. So part of the chief focus is on the hands, but the other is on the do and the renmei, the yin conception vessel, the young governing vessel, um, and their connection points. Remember, you know, if you know small circulation, you know the yin conception vessel begins uh, at the uh, you know the underside of the mouth and is down the front. Now different people have the in point differently. Some people put it actually at the Huyin, at the bottom of the sea, at the perineum, Water Tiger School of Perspective puts it between the, the anal cleft, what's an anal cleft, and the Ming Men point, which we actually place a little bit higher than some people. Our Ming Men point in our approach is equivalent to the position of the acupuncture point for the Shia Dan Tien, the lower Fu Ming Lixir on the front. So it's not at the Ming Men. Other people will put it at the Ming Men. Some put it at the Ming Men wherever they locate their Ming Men. And others put it at the uh, perineum of the Hu Yin. And some people actually think the Hu Yin and the Ming Men are the same point. Ming Men means gate of life, by the way. So we want our mind on our connection point between the Yin conception vessel and the young governing vessel. Suppose it starts at that connection point, moves up the spine on the center line, up over the top of the head, the clock way is included down the center and ends in the roof of the mouth, which is one of the reasons when we do stuff we normally touch the tip of the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Some people put that acupuncture point in the soft palate. From the roof of the rough palate, we create a lot of tension. We don't want that kind of tension. Um, so those who have a difference of opinion, and that includes Water Tiger School, puts the, that connection point, that acupuncture point, at the roof of the mouth on the hard palate. So you just want to have that sort of idea of that image of that flow, of that circula circulation going around and around. And again, some people have its main circulation going in a backwards direction. Others, like Water Tiger, have it in the forward. And in both, uh, hopefully both, but we at Water Tiger realize you can change the direction of that circulation. But the primary for us is this pattern. Yin conception vessel, young governing vessel, yin conception vessel, young governing vessel. Uh, yin conception vessel down, young governing vessel. Um, so anyway, so on that circulation and on the connection point uh, between the Ming Men and the Yang Kwa. So that's the chi focus. Now I mentioned that the footwork is always stepping to the 45, but here kicking where the balance and coordination becomes a little troublesome. Kick at a height that works for you, right? If we were in a classroom, I'd say, you know, don't compare yourself to anybody else. But we're not in a classroom. We're online. So you have me, and I don't know where my balance is. So we'll see where uh, Lao Shi Guan's map will always take us to go. Um, so, you know, if you're fine here, then great, knee is still open. You don't have to hold it this long, by the way. But if in going into it, 
that works better for you. And as a matter of fact, that works better for you, actually setting the heel on the ground. You still want the knee open a little bit. You still want that idea of that extension. So you want that kicking energy in slow motion. You don't want to just go, oh, okay, it's resting, and not have any of the energy. So wherever you want, bare minimum, really powering things down, parallel-ish. Ish. I love using ish these days. So that's going to be the lower body. It goes out. You fall over. Let me do that again. It goes out. Let me do that again. Take three. Set the heel down. Roll into it. And chamber into the next. And that's the lower body. The upper body, again, hands are the antlers. The arm that matches the unweighted leg is going to cross to the inside. So I'll get the breath pattern in here in a minute, in a moment. Four, five. Crossing, turning out, holding for a moment. Arms extend, pushing the antlers forward, heel down. Hands down. Back foot in. Pause. Crossing. Now, right leg is empty, so the right hand is crossing closer to the body. And I do that facing the 45. Turn to kick. Hands at about chest level. Leg extended. Hold. Arms extend as heel goes down. Hands and arms down. Hands, arms down, foot in, all end at the same time. Crossing, turning, extending, hands up, all end at the same time. Pause. Hands out, heel down. Hands down, foot in, all end at the same time. And I know I'm losing my head here. But I need to take one more step. Right leg is empty. Right arm is crossing inside. Turning, extension, hands out. Boom. In. Now, for the closing, I'm going to take a couple of steps back and hold that basic upper body position. It's a little reminiscent, if you know Water Tiger School, of Poor Chi through the Bok Wei from our Ten Keys Tai Chi Qigong breathing set. I'm going to turn in the direction I'm walking, palms up, bring on the balls of the feet, palms down, at the center line, not touching. A little rebound pulls the hands under the back, yeah. And that's the standard close for our approach to the five animal products. So again, take that last step. You should balance the sides. Boom. See, it's a little spin on the balls of the feet, kicking the heels back. Heels down, hands down. And that little rebound pulls the hands to the back. Yeah. So there is that. Uh, I should mention as I always do when we're doing the animal frolics, that in all reality, our approach to the animal frolics is a circular walk. So we actually take the frolic, whatever frolic we're doing, and we put a roundness to it, if you will. But in learning, teaching, and learning the, the animal frolics, it's best to do it in a linear fashion, because that way you can really have a better chance at seeing what's going on uh, hearing what's going on in the inner circle, your line of sight is uh, much different. Um, so the breath in here, it's really best if you can match the breath instruction. That being said, if you have to breathe more often, by all means, breathe more often. But ideally, in a perfect world, this is the breath pattern and the movement. So the inhalation begins as you're chambering the leg and crossing, continues through the extension, and then there's the hold of the breath or the hold of the movement. Then the exhale begins and carries you to this point. So inhale, oops, inhale. 
actually. The turn can begin inhale as you begin to chamber. You don't have to hold it to the very end. Exhale. And like the movement ending together, inhale, the inhalation should carry you to this point. The exhalation should carry you to this point. When the headless Qigong player turns, faces the camera, and folds. So that leaves one thing about which to talk. Well, actually, two things about which to talk. And that is the nature and the spirit of the deer. Now, a lot of times, when we think of deer, we think of timidity. Timid little creatures. But the nature of the deer and the deer frolics and the five animal frolics is calm and alert. So you want to imbue your approach to the frolic with that concept. And also, the spirit is supple, without limit. The visual image that I use to represent that is that idea of the deer. You see the deer standing beside a fence. And then maybe you see what seems like a slight movement, and suddenly they're on the other side with no effort, with no clue that that was possible. Supple, without limits. Again, the physical movement should feel more as a stretch than anything else. The breath in through the nose, out through the pursed lips, sort of the sound of the breeze. There are holes in movement, folds in breath. Movement and breath should all be over at the same time. Ideally, again, breathe when you have to, but ideally, you follow the recommended breath pattern. Ah, uh, and I, oh, yeah, the do and the ren may, the yin conception vessel, the young governing vessel, that circulation, um, the chi in the hands representing the antlers, and also at that connection point before the first chamber ring. So, a little bit below the main ring, above the chamber, but. So there you go. That is deer kicking. We're going to do a pass. And we call it a video. No expectation. Whatever happens is a pleasant surprise. Remember, 45 to 45. Now, that's another time, another place, another opportunity to make adjustments for where you are physically. And what I mean by that is 45 to 45 might be too sharp that, you know, stepping at a 90 degree angle might be too sharp of an angle for some people that needs their hips that sort of thing. If that's the case, you know, maybe 30 degree angles on both feet, maybe 45 on one side and 30 on the other. Do what works for you. Maintain the integrity of the exercise of the frolic. But don't injure yourself, by all means. So, again, sort of letting go of expectation. Breathing. A little pre-deer stretching stretch. Settling in. And again, probably best not to you know, do the chamber and the cross and then turn to extend, but actually do all of that at the same time. <laughs> Just waiting for what feels for, for really, my Iowan chose, for the right moment. Find an exhalation. And then the inhalation starts. Hold. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Excellent. 
crossing. Sort of think of your chi dantian as a black hole. I'm not clenching my abdominals or my lower back. That idea of everything sort of being pulled into that center will help you maintain the governance of your balance. Now I'm going to get really, really close to the camera here. Oops. Thinking about that. This did the wrong cross. Because I'm chambering the right leg, right hand to the inside. Excellent. And then right again. So that is deer kicking. One of the deer frolics in the Water Tiger School's approach to the five animal frolics. And our five animals, by the way, crane, monkey, tiger, bear, and deer. Other people have phoenix or leopard or dragon or serpent. Uh, others are less, have less uh, mobility. They may take a step forward and then come back take a step forward and then come back or something like that, or they may just be completely grounded in their frolic. Uh, all sorts of different uh, approaches. But remember, since I screwed up that last, you know, the last pair of crosses, the empty leg and matches the arm and hand that's on the inside. You chamber as you begin the turn, finish the kick in the hand position as you end the turn, Hold. Leg both mostly elongated, heel down, hands out, and as you shift into that foot, arms and hands down, back foot in. Inhale. Exhale. Do in the Ren May, the Yin conception vessel, the Yang governing vessel. The acupuncture point, so the point where they connect between the Ming men and the anal cleft. Focus on the hands as well. Being calm and alert while being supple without limits. And there you go. A little deer kicking from the five animal frolics. Uh, as always, uh, appreciate your time and attention. Um, as always, we will post a link to this in our Facebook page, which is you know, Water Tiger School uh, on Facebook. And uh, there, the comments are wide open here on YouTube uh, because we discovered the YouTube algorithms don't really do a good job capturing um, shall we say hot links to hot dates? Um, we preview all the comments, but you know, good or bad, as long as you know you're not flaming us, um, we'll let them go through. Uh, we just don't need the hot links to hot dates. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, as I said, we're going to keep doing this. Um, I'm, you know sort of depending upon my my schedule what's going on um, in the office uh, but it's our hope as water tiger school to do these every two or three weeks it's been uh i think well over a month since the last one so again we apologize for that um and you know everybody stay safe uh follow the real science um, wear a mask, get poked, and take care of yourselves. Thanks, everybody. Catch you next time. Laushi Lawrence McElroy for Water Tiger School, signing off.